Is it worth getting a heat pump? They're so expensive compared to gas boilers and other ways of producing heat for your hydronic heating. Well, let's find out. I'm Phil from Euroheat and we've been designing and installing hydronic heating systems in Australia for over 30 years and for over 20 of those years we've been uh, incorporating heat pumps into those systems. So do we need a hydronic heat pump? Well the answer is truthfully no. Gas boilers have been uh, the go-to sort of heat source for hydronic heating for the last few decades and they're pretty good at what they do apart from the you know burning fossil fuels, etc. But they're compact, they're quiet, and they can produce a lot of heat instantly, which is generally what we need in Australia for our homes, which are typically energy guzzlers, right? So we don't need a heat pump. We can go with a gas boiler for a hydronic heating system, if it's radiators or floor heating or fan cools, whatever else it might be. But why would we go for a hydronic heat pump? Well, first of all, it means that you can have a fully electric household. So uh, if that's the journey you're on, changing out your gas appliances and just getting on the electricity um, wave and say utilizing your solar power to help with that, well heat pumps are basically, well not the only way, you can have a direct electric um, boiler, but they're not very good. You consume a lot of heat, a lot of energy to heat water, let's say with a direct electric boiler or even in the simple form, the electric hot water tank. And the reason is that for every kilowatt of uh, electricity you put in, you get about 0.99 kilowatts of heat out. And you might need for your house 10, 20, 30 kilowatts of heat. So it's quite a lot of energy if you have a, let's say you've got a hydronic heating system already and you want to upgrade to a heat pump. <coughs> Excuse me, the boiler might be 30 kilowatts in, in, in um, heat output. So therefore you probably n need a 30 kilowatt electric heat source. So yeah, you can do that with uh, electric heating elements, but the power consumption would be quite a lot and it would cost you an arm and a leg to run. So this is where heat pumps come in, where a heat pump in a well-designed system and a quality heat pump will uh, increase that efficiency from, let's say 99%, like the electric element, to 400, 500, maybe even 600%, depending on the, the type and the setup. So sure, it is expensive to put in, but for a quality system, uh, it should pay itself off in roughly 10 years. So if you're looking to stay in your house for longer than 10 years, then hands down, we would say it's worth it. Now you can check those numbers, of course, with a payback period, and we're always happy at Euroheat to help with that calculation to see if it is the right move for you. Uh, but generally, like I said, more than 10 years, just go for it. Now, the other advantage of heat pumps are that they can also produce cold water, not just hot water, but cold water. So you can actually integrate uh, the cooling of your house with the same unit. So you can have floor cooling, for example, uh, or fan coil cooling, which is air conditioning. And the floor cooling is pretty handy. It doesn't take usually all of um, the heat load, depending in Australia where you are. But let's say here in Perth, it can, Look, it can provide, let's say, 30 to 50 watts of cooling capacity per square meter of floor. And in Perth, we find these days, you need maybe on average 150 watts per square meter. So looking at those numbers, it covers about a third of that peak load. But the thing is, that's the peak load. So it can actually cool, provide enough cooling for your house, let's say 80 to 90% of the, 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 heat, uh, the hot season. So a lot of our customers find that it's great. They use the, the floor cooling most of the time because it's gentle and um, it, it basically provides enough cooling for them without air blowing around. Uh, and then only if it's humid or if it's really hot and say heat wave, will they turn the air conditioning on. Now I mentioned just a minute ago about integrating the air conditioning in with your um, hydronic heat pump. And it's possible, it's great, but I wouldn't always recommend it because it is actually cheaper even though it's counterintuitive because you've already got the heat pump there, but it's actually cheaper to put a separate air conditioning system in. And the reason is those air conditioning systems, they pump them out by the millions each year in, from the factories. So they're really, really cheap to put in. So usually if you've got the space, then uh, that's usually the most economic way to go is just to have separate units. 
So what about if you have solar power, like solar PV system generating electricity during the day uh, on the roof? Well, yeah, the heat pump is great at consuming that energy. But the trick is you have to actually uh, do it intentionally. You either have to have the system in its most basic form, you can just say, okay, yep, yeah, run during the day when I expect there to be solar power from you know, maybe 8 a.m. in winter until um, 4 p.m. In, in the afternoon in winter. Uh, so that's a simple way to do it. And what you'll find is obviously clouds will come and rain and the weather changes. So you want to always be producing um, electricity during those times. And sometimes the heat pump will have to draw from the grid. But a lot of the time you will uh, utilize that solar power. But there are actually smarter ways you can do that too, where you, the heat pump can intentionally um, take that energy if it's being produced. So it can communicate with the solar inverter and it knows when there's excess solar power being produced. And therefore it can consume that and put that into your house and store this energy so that you don't have to buy it later on from the grid at whatever price the electricity retailer is selling it to you for. So if we recap, it's great for electrifying your home. It's great if you want to integrate some cooling and it's great for utilizing uh, your solar power that you generate. Just make sure that it, that's intentional. And then the, uh, the reason why you might not go for a heat pump is because it does cost quite a lot to install initially. There are some cheap heat pumps out there, but I wouldn't recommend them because they probably won't last too many years and they'll be loud and energy inefficient. So they won't really save you money. So if you're gonna go for a heat pump, don't go for one of the cheap ones. The medium sort of priced ones, they're usually like not too bad, they're pretty good. And then there's the premium ones, which do cost um, quite a lot, but you'll find that they are really energy efficient and they're really, really quiet. So if you'd like help with a heat pump for your hydronic heating system, in your building, in your house, please do give us a call at Euroheat. We'd love to help you.